Hello. 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 Hey. Good hey. evening. Hey. Thank you. I, I can't hear you. Hey. Good evening. Hey. Um, thank you very, very much indeed for coming down to this uh, Midsummer Madness uh, event, which is, seems to be actually magic. Mad, 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 mad. <laughs> anyway, um, Midsummer Madness of Magic and uh, yes, and mystery, tales of mystery and imagination. Edgar Allan Poe, one of our best writers. <laughs> so, <laughs> without further ado, we've actually got Edgar Allan Poe exhumed from the tomb and. Um, no, we haven't actually. This is this is uh, the fabulous Lauren Bolger who's going to be opening with some poetry. Can you give it up? Thank you. Okay. Her name was Bella. When I was saved, I would click off stroking dogs. I fell another kind of loving when she died. I took my chalk to the bushes. My granddad said he'll live on it. I wrote Ellen B in the bricks. Her name was Bella. And when none of this began to matter anymore, I sat here tonight staring at the vacuum of my own domestic, touching the desk because here are the bricks as I remember them. Before the rain ran pink yellow, as would the life course of a bruise or an upbringing I could lose. But not tonight, with back a sweat, there's no heat in here. The heating's deadened like all my pets. Or any secrets I've ever redefined. They live on sulking, wearing a leash of some kind. <laughs> this is called my brother. I was told he would bury soldiers in the grass I put my hands in. They would fight and the loser would lose a child's faith. I was told they could replace any lost as wealth brought and poured a prayer of violence on us. This taste never touched my face like yours. I never lived like you. Introduced to music from outside your bedroom, you covered the clues, tied my tie the right way for school. Old zoom-ins of Yuma are well remembered. You were quicker than me only slow in recovery. You see, when they saw the drops like pearls on your dresser, a man said, where is my son? And it was twice before we all said nothing. Content in your breathing, or how you steer a surname from the shiny sex of a payphone, from the drone of the words you said to me, I love you. I don't see you in life or death. But the last rug will wrap us both up. I was told you buried your soldiers in the dells I played on as a child, and I'd give each one of the ten years between us just to see you come down, to lift the measures from the features we share in vain, our similarity. a very short one. Parts two. And now someone's talking nearby, but it could just be in my head over the roses left as donations. Please stand, please. This is called B. Bolger Senior, 1930 to 2016. When the family had gathered for their second course in the hotel behind their parked cars, I'll be thinking of the meal we shared and the delicacy of straight fish pushed round our plates. Like white gates against paper plates, I can't stop. Only our hands and only your hands open these memories where all our possessions lie down together combined. Only what is mine was never mine, but we can say it's yours. And what bodies arrange themselves in the decor this January morning is not my family, 
but my life untangling the very best of lifelong friends. Come on, I'm not strong enough to move on to the subject of lost friends. What kind of person am I? What kind of person am I? To tell them I'd visit you the week before you died. I said I'd light a candle for you in the morning at the little gem. Only when the morning came with its aching power, you lost yours. But your weight survived in every seeable detail of the house. That's why I can't be there for anyone until I've made amends with grief. Shook his hand the same way I shook hand with my dad's friend who owned racehorses. I don't want to care about death or what it does to me. I only want to care about you. And it's a shame all the moments you asked if I was okay can never be renewed because they helped me fix my past. Sharing ice cream when I was seven, we had spoons, long handled, and I was able to learn the importance of the long handle and the tall Sunday glass. As I leaned in, I had to stand on the red seating. For all I know, we could have been waiting to see a show. I could see animals upstairs when, they, when you talked about the Sahara, how it's like no other heat. Have you ever eaten a pineapple in one go? I'd never tried before, then this day I found one. I cut the head off with a machete, knife, and then the sides like this. One, two, three, four. I didn't know this at the time, but I'd made one large pineapple chunk. I ate some, then I wanted more, and all day the acid contorted my body at the shore. I reimagined us painting near the garden, watching you drill coconuts and make utility belts for me. When I was stuck like I am still in the colourful wheel, when I was stuck for work spraying perfume on card, I nearly cried with a customer. It's funny how many students my age cry on the shop floor. Last week I asked the key holder why the girl on Dior is crying and she said her boyfriend is a dancer and he's away and it is getting too much for her working and studying and missing him. Working and studying and missing him. It's all getting a bit too much for her today. Beginning again, I've been training myself to celebrate this sorrow. I take it home sometimes to sleep beside me on the great white patches, these gaps in my understanding. In the morning, it hurts the most, and whenever I drink something out of my league, sprinkle with sugar or cassis, I'd think of you, your floppy bow ties and your evening ties. And whenever this February evening dies, I'll hold my own in no grasses, no love on this road where these people live, alongside these people. And I'll imagine your Catholicism in that parade you described once. You said some of Dean's Gate's worst villains were seen holding the cross against bouquets of flowers. And I will remember all the times you said you saw through me, and all you could see was my golden heart. I know yours could never be burned in the thing that lives behind these red curtains. In my head that gold beats for us the same way my gold is half yours, like a white rose and a pinprick of blood. We stain those white curtains, death is claret rivers. We sink into it as we are, and for now, your hand in my life is only ferried away. But the image I have of your hand pushing the plate is clear, and because of that, my hands will always drag forward as they age. Thank you. <laughs> something a bit lighter like something funny so I'll just finish with a brighter one because they were all a bit melancholic <laughs> yeah there was an element of, of your joy during the uh, during that long elegy I wrote <laughs> um, let me see uh, okay just a short one it's called I know again I know my irrationality was a bit of a branch broken above the love 
and that sometimes I came up to you soaking in olive oil or drugged. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night and um, thanks to Mark Torrin for putting this together. Good evening, the microphone. Yes, I do. Thank you very much.